like him. Love me like him. Let me hear you, choir. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our peace will stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Then I'll see his face. Robert George, Brian Reeves, Henry uh, Winbush, Art Crum, Roscoe Mosley Sr. and Roscoe Mosley Jr. John Brother Roscoe, I just want to say that we're praying for you and Ebony, our homeless members yes. and others. You're not forgotten. We thank God for the sister who's showing her faith, Sister Audrey Smith. Amen. 
Yes, we pray for her, but she's right here. Sometimes God moves in mysterious ways. We don't know how long Job was sick. It wasn't a day either. The Bible says his friends sit with him for some, I believe, 10 days. That's two weeks or a week. That meant that he was sick a long time. But you don't know how God is coming and when God is coming. While I'm speaking, Bishop Pringle, if you if you hear me, let me know how you're doing. You asked me to pray and I'm, we're doing that. We'd like to know how you're coming along. John Mosley III, Christopher Morlock, Larry Stewart, Daddy Ray and Ronald Stuman, Brenda Barr in St. Louis, Brother Grover Brown, Ebony Hill, Rhonda Ely, Gabriel, Are you? Jared Pinna, Paul Cotton, the mother of Daryl Johnson, Mary Jane Jones and family, Calvin Burns, Margaret Brooks, Shante Mitchell, Teresa Johnson, Amber Fisher, Stanton Royal, Carol Sims, Jesse Love, Miracle Buckley, K.D. Welch, Katina Hernandez Brown Lee, Audrea O'Brien, Melinda Martin, Odessa Johnson, Vicki Wilborn. James Buckley, Sharon Downey, Linda Margaret, Mr. Tramell, Mr. Wong, Josie Harris, Ronald Wilborn, Juanita Johnson, Jazz Herdick, Michael Braxton Sr. and Michael Baxter Jr., Sue Bell, Alondra Jackson, the family of Kali Crosby in their hour of bereavement, Jerry Paul, Montana Peters, Zuni Fajardo, Mrs. Finch, Shamia Jordan, Pamela Jordan, Gwen Hegford, Jean Gardner and family in their hour of bereavement, and Jackie James. And for those of you who did not get your names on the prayer list, God is there. He's everywhere at the same time. Just a little faith. Yes will move mountains. And we believe that because some of us have tried him and he's came, he has come and answered our prayers. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. All wise and almighty God, thou who sit high and you look low into the hearts and minds of men and women. You created us in your image and likeness. We come on the pleading terms of mercy, thanking you for watching and taking care of us while we slept and slumbered in the image of death. Early this morning, you touched each of us with your finger of love and our eyes came open to behold another Sabbath day. A day that we have never seen before, nor promised. But by your grace and your mercy, thank you for touching us this morning with your finger of love. Our eyes came open. You gave us strength and health to get up out of our beds, put on our clothes and a mind to come back to your house of prayer. We want to thank you for saving our souls. We call on you this morning in behalf of the names that have been called on your prayer list and on the prayer board. Father God, we we we're in need of thee. When we got up this morning, we needed you. Right now we need you. We call on you with an intercessory prayer for the names, Lord. Please so have mercy. Some of us have called on you in time past. 
and you heard and answered our prayer. O thou who sit high and you look low, please to have mercy in the name of Jesus upon the names that have been called and on our prayer board. And those who are zooming in, Lord, touch their bodies. Mind regulator, heart fixer. Look upon this neighborhood, we pray thee. Touch their hearts, Lord. Look upon Oakland, San Francisco. Not by your wrath, but by your tender mercies. We need you worldwide. Look upon our leaders of the nation, our governors and mayors. Please, sir, have mercy, Lord. We need you this morning. Yes, God. Men are crying everywhere. You said there will be no peace. The only peace is in Christ Jesus. Oh God, look upon America. Look upon California. Look upon Oakland, San Francisco. Please, sir, have mercy. Please, sir, Lord, have mercy. We need you, Lord. We need you in this country. Look upon the situation in Ukraine. Have mercy, Lord. And, and Lord, when this life journey comes to an end, pray your blessing upon these who under the sound of my voice. You brought us together together once again to praise your holy name. Thank you for the teachers this morning. The acting superintendent. Bless we pray thee. And when this life journey comes to an end, we too like others must stick our swords in the sand of time to study war no more. Over yonder, just any place in your holy kingdom where we can give you the praises throughout eternity. We breathe this prayer in the name of Jesus. And for his name's sake and after this matter, you say, pray ye our Father. Let to serve thee. Be how to serve thee. Will thou teach? Will
by the specials, I am so satisfied. Yeah. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Yes. Followed by, oh, how I love Jesus. Led by Sister Veronica George. Have you got good religion? Led by Sister Veronica George. And hold on, oh, so And before specials come. Once again, I want to say to you who are Zooming with us, first of all, I want to say don't be feeling that you've forgotten. All right. So many people now are feeling lonely, depressed, lost. But look up. For your help will draw nigh. He stands at the door of your heart. He says, if you open, he'll come in. And the Father. Yes. Don't you get depressed. Yeah. Don't you get down. Don't get yeah. down. Yeah. The hope All right. in life is Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. I know we go to friends. I know we go to loved ones. I know we talk to mom and daddy and those you have confidence in. But they're just limited. Yeah. That's true. That's right. The only limited to a certain point where they too need Christ. They too need Jesus. Don't you look down. That's what Satan want you to do. And say, oh, what's the use? There's always help in Christ. He'll never turn you away. Specials will come now. Amen. Thank the Lord. I understand. I'm satisfied. Well, I certainly am. Amen. With Christ. Yeah. We all have challenges in life. Yes. But in Christ, in Christ, He has a way to transition you. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind.
possession all to be kept by Jesus. Yes. How many want to be kept by Jesus? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. It's a time now that you cannot rely on anybody but Jesus in this sliding world of transitions going negative. The only positive thing in life is the church. Stay with Jesus. And let him be your guide. Amen. You can't keep yourself. No, no, no.
Oh, How I Love Jesus, led by Sister Patrice Ely. Yeah. 
that. goes back when we had that great musical at the Oakland Auditorium many years ago when the late Dr. Carl J. Anderson, my pastor, my mentor, yeah, the president of the Baptist State, Baptist State Sunday School and BTU Congress, Christian Education. Pre, uh, you always have the musical on that Monday. And I talked about that auditorium was packed. Yeah, I was working along with the late sister Burns and others in the kitchen, serving those big uh, hot dogs, those uh, beef hot dogs. Yes, and assorted sodas, and etc. And I saw the uh, the Hawkins marched down in their black, I believe, black uniforms. Came through and marched on up. And Sister Dottie Peoples, Dottie, is that right? Dottie Peoples and the Barrett sisters, Sister Inez Andrews, were all featured. Oh, that was a wonderful music. He packed, he, Dr. Anderson packed that auditorium. And they sang this song and dedicated when he used to say, hold on, oh soldier, on the air, to encourage many, many, many listeners. May God will bless his soul. Amen. Hold on, oh soldier, by the Hawkins. Yes. Sing good, children. Say that.
say it, say it. Scripture, where the subject is being taken from this morning is the 51st number of the psalm yes. mm -hmm. and verse 10, mm -hmm. where it says, Create in me mm -hmm. a clean heart, O God, yes. and renew a right spirit within me. And I think I was talking about we can't we can't do this by ourselves. That's right. Amen. Did you hear what he said? Created me a clean heart yes. and renew a right spirit. Yes. Our spirit is against God. It is. It is. Against righteousness. Mm -hmm. A human problem is our subject. Uh -huh. <laughs> a human problem. Yeah. Oh. A human problem. All right, all right. 
a human heart condition. Post subject. You may be seated. All right. King David, as I forestated, he loved God. Yes. God loved him. Yes. Openly confesses with a profound understanding of a generation after generation that has an inheritance of a human deadly problem. Yes. That is a humanly bad heart. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah concurs and confirms in saying in his writings in Jeremiah the 17th chapter verse 9 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it? Again, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse 9, 17 and 9th verse. King David says in Psalms 51st number and the 10th verse, as he is pray, prayerfully crying out to the Lord God, created me a clean heart. Regardless how moderate day science states that all life, all human life, comes from the sea, formulated by molecules, then went through the development processing stages from being an australopithecines, which means uh, uh, define science as a uh, human ape-like walking on all fours, mean hands and feet, crawling, so to speak, with the half of a brain, which I don't mean, don't know how you can really define a half of a brain. But science says that this australopithecines had half of a brain. And once again, walking on all fours, ape-like creature who, uh, according to science, came out of the sea, formulated by molecules. Uh huh. Which is a pronostication, that means a professional guess by the science, uh, that it took five million years for half of his, his australopithecus brain to develop halfway. The question arises. What actually makes the brain think? What actually makes the brain reason and function? Science studies the substance of the brain. Now, now moving on, it, it took another, according to science, five million years for the Australopithecines, the, uh, the ape-like human, with half of a brain walking on fours to develop into a homo sapien, meaning a thinking man yes. who walked upright. Yes. But I got a problem all right, all right. 
with this pronostication, uh, which changes every seemingly 20 years scientifically. But God created man in his likeness and image in one day. Now, I got, a, I got a problem with science right, right, right. and their process of development. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, which is the word of God, which is truth, says, but God created man in his likeness and image in one day. And a highly intelligent being on earth being a ruler over all of God's creation. He created him in one day. What they call a homo sapien. Now, now, God allowed Adam to name every creature. Now, to me, that's in highly intelligent. Even in modern times now, we don't know everything. But Adam... Create, uh, named all the creatures. Amen. Amen. I got a problem with that. Right, right. Now, now I go go on. What is the substance? And I'm I'm gonna deal with the heart. Just, what is the substance of our man's breath made from? What is the substance? How does science? Uh, Explain the substance of the breath. Or how do you define the spirit of God within the man? How does science define Job says in the 27th chapter and the third verse, All the while my breath is in me, and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. What does that mean, scientifically? Uh, the molecules are made up of atoms, according to science. Well, what is an atom? How do they define an atom? We don't know, and neither do they. All they know that atoms formulate a molecule. And molecules formulate everything according to science. Where does human breath come from? All right, all right. What is the soul? What is the soul of man? Uh, make of who, where does the soul, where does the spirit of God in man live inside of man? Wake up. If you get sleepy, stand up. You need to hear this. What is the heart? Is it physical matter that pumps the blood through the veins within our physical body? They call it the heart, yes, I can go along with that. But what is, uh, oh, with, with, with what heart do you do those that say that they love people with all their hearts, which heart is it? Is it the one that pumps the blood? Or what, what heart are you talking about? I love you with all my heart. What heart are they talking about uh, when they say my heart says something different? Is it the physical part? Well, what are we talking about here? And, and where does the loving heart uh, temporarily dwell within all humans? Right. 
Where is the heart? Where is it? Where is it? Where is the dictionary defines the heart that is intrinsic in this manner? And I quote, a hollow uh, muscular organ, let's talk about the physical part, heart, yes. organ that pumps the blood through the circulation system by rhythmic uh, contraction and dilation. That's the physical heart. Right, right, right. Invertebrates, these may be up to four chambers, as in humans, with two artery, arteria, yes. arteria. Arteus and two uh, ventricles. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. That's the human yeah. heart. Yeah. Yeah. They're defined. Mm -hmm. The other definition by man in how he defines the heart is as follows the central or inner most part of something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of something now he's defining the intrinsic heart uh -huh. yes. by saying the central or innermost part of something my question then is where is the innermost part of a human are you with me Or, or, or the heart, or is the heart and mind connected? <laughs> All right. How? When Jesus says the thoughts of the heart, yeah. how is that wow. scientifically connected? <laughs> how? How? What do people? mean when they say lay it not to my heart but to my mind how, how, how do we define that are you listening what is the heart when the Lord God says in Proverbs the 23rd chapter verse 26 my son give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Is he talking about the heart that pumps the blood? What heart is he talking about? The only true source that can give me a clear realization of the intrinsic nature of the inner man where I dwell in this body of clay that comes from the ground. I'm talking about the physical. And one day we'll go back to the ground is the Holy Bible. We really do not know what a molecule is. Yet we hear science that a molecule is a group of atoms bound together the smallest fundamental unit of a chemical compound that can take part in a chemical reaction. But he still haven't explained what an atom is. All right. All right. Then, then, then my question is, what is actually an atom? Which science only repeats about an atom being the basic unit of a chemical element. But this does not really tell me what an atom is. What is an atom's substance? Where do all atoms come from? If the molecule comes out of the, the sea, then it's made up of atoms, then where do atoms come from? 
All right. Yeah. If everything that you see are made up, made from molecules, then who created the mo the molecules that made of atoms that are made of atoms? If life came out of the water, then why does death decay and corrode uh, the human body into dust right. and dirt? Right. <laughs> if life came out of the water, yeah. All right. All right. All right. if we were uh, molecules and came out of the water, then why do we go back to dirt? Why don't we go back to water? The chemical compound pronostication does not make sense to me. There is an imbalance, a disconnect from reality, and really tells me that from the beginning, God, period. I base my claim on God base my belief on God yeah. not on pronostications that changes every 20 years of prospect God never changes in the beginning God I'm the Lord God God and I change not in the beginning God reality, reality tells me that on the sixth day in Genesis the first chapter verse 26 through 31 says God said yeah, let yeah. us make man yeah, yeah. on the sixth day uh -huh. not five million years in between on the sixth day let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them let them let them let them let them let them have dominion that's crucial over the fish of the sea now now uh, if he came out of the sea, a water, he should be a fish. All right, all right. All right. According to. All right. And over the file of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God. Created he him. He didn't create man in an ape image. God is not an ape image. He's beautiful. When I look at you, you're beautiful. God created you. Regardless what you think, God created you. Yeah. You're beautiful. Yeah. When I see you, I see God. Yeah. Don't mess up God's image. Yeah. Putting all those cord curlers in your nose and tattoos on your body. God didn't put no tattoo on his body. Oh, it's getting quiet now. God made you yes, he did. beautiful. Amen. And God yes. blessed them. Yes. He made more than one man. God blessed them. Yes. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Yes. Yes. And replenish the earth. Yes. And subdue it. Mm -hmm. now, now, it talks about man being astrolopithes. What was the woman? Never talks about the woman. It talks about the man. Well, where did the woman come from? How did she develop? How did she develop into a woman? If a man is a man, who created the woman? The woman. I got quiet on that, huh? Be fruitful. He made male and female. Yes. 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 Male. Amen. 
created he them. Yeah. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb uh -huh. bearing fruit, which is upon the face of all the earth, mm -hmm. yeah. and every tree, and the, which is the fruit of a tree, yielding seed mm -hmm. to you, it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every file of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, mm -hmm. yes. I have given every green herb for meat, and it, it, it was so. Mm -hmm. And God saw everything that he had made, right. and behold, uh -huh. it was very good. He completed his creation. It wasn't a process in action. It wasn't a, a Hegel evolutionary process. It was God's creation. He finalized it. Man was already made what they call a homo sapien. He's beyond a homo sapien with his intelligence of, late, of his dominionship over everything and naming everything and, and, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Reality tells me that man is not a uh, matter uh, a creature as science allures directly to. Uh, he's not a, a matter uh, a molecule and yet he is made up of reality tells me that God the Father God the Word God the Holy Ghost were not even and will never be astrolopithesis ape like uh, brainless walking on all fours being processed over time when in actuality God is time yes. God is the same all of the time God took one day to create man into a highly intellectual intelligent being it was man who decided to become autonomous from God and went away from God and became ape-like. Became barbaric. It was man's decision to become barbaric and ape-like. Trying to model himself after animals. And became dumb. Yes. It, is a, it is a reality that man was made out of the dust, the dirt of the ground. It's reality. And not from uh, atoms and molecules come out of the sea. And yet we are what we are. Uh, everything science has done in relation to molecules, okay, we'll accept that, but no, not creation. All right, all right. It is a reality that Genesis 2 and 7 says, and the Lord God formed man yes. out of the dust of the ground and breathed yes. into his nostrils yes. the breath of life. And man became a living soul. If you want to understand about the breath, you want to understand about the soul, read the Bible. Get close to God. Then you'll understand your breath. Then you'll understand your soul. There are some things we will never understand to the fullest. No man will understand God. Now, now this takes us back to reality, to the main source who 
completely knows that inner and outer spiritual and physical uh, uh, anatomies of human and spiritual beings, which we are. Where King David says in Psalms 51, 5 through 6, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, yes. and in sin did my mother conceive me. Yes. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, yes. and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Yes. The easy reader version says, I was born to do wrong. If science says that we came out of sin, then that negates sin. Right, 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 right. That negates the Bible uh -huh, right. of telling us who we really are, Sister Alicia. Right, right. All right. You're right. Amen. They don't want to see the reality of man that we are wrong. We need God. They want to have a clean slate. But you can't have a clean slate. Regardless what you do, you need to be cleansed. We were born bad because our mothers brought us in with the problem of sin. Regardless how they say they're innocent, oh, we're sinners. David said, I was born to do wrong. A sinner before I left my mother's womb. Yes. So don't talk about how uh, holy you are. All right, all right. All right. You need Jesus. Yes. Yes. You need a heart yes. Yes. transplant. And I don't mean no physical heart. I'm talking about a spiritual. Yes. Created me a clean heart, oh God. David continued to say, you, you, in the, in the uh, easy reader verse, you want me to be completely loyal. So put truth, put true wisdom deep inside of me. And going back to the first four verses of Psalm 51, it says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me yeah. thoroughly from my iniquity. All right. And cleanse me from my sin. Yeah. Yeah. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Yeah. And my sin is ever before me. Yeah. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. Yeah. And done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified yes. when thou speakest. Yes. And be clear when thou judgest. Yes. Verses 1 through 4 are very critical in understanding the reality of, uh, of creating a creation. Because the Lord God is the creator of human life. You can only stay, you can only understand the heart. By acknowledging that God is the creator yeah, yeah. of human life. Only he and he alone can create a new heart yes. in us. Yes, can. I'm not talking about a heart that pumps the blood through the human anatomy, but a new heart where the deep secrets of life and death yeah. reign yeah, in yeah. the thoughts of your heart, where the uh, emotions are grounded from uh, hate to uh, love and emotions of love and hate, joy and sadness, harsh words and soft words all come from yeah, yeah. Jesus, the master teacher says in St. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 17 through 20. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Do not 
He yet, Jesus says under, to, his under, uh, to his disciples, understand whatsoever entereth in at the mouth, goeth into the belly, yeah. and is cast out into the drop. Yeah. But those things which proceed out of the mouth yeah. Yeah. come forth from the heart, yeah. Yeah. and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Now you want to know where it comes from? You want to know where your wicked mind comes from? You want to know where those uh, nasty thoughts come from? Those nasty words? It comes from the heart. Jesus says for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders. Adulterers. Adulterers. Fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Jesus teaches us about the physical anatomy as well as the spiritual anatomy at the same time which is the most important part of all humans. He teaches us that fornication, nasty words, joking and jesting, all other sins cannot be de uh, defeated from outside of the heart. It takes the Lord God to cleanse mankind's heart. Just washing your hands and, and eating the correct food does not cleanse your inside, your nasty thoughts, your evil actions. He's, he's teaching us that. The Pharisees question him about washing the hands, but he let them know it's not what goes in, because that's going to the drunk. That's fine. But what comes out Lord, have mercy. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Create in me a clean heart so that the thoughts of my heart are true. Are you listening? Create in me a clean heart so when my heart speaks, yes, whatsoever things I think are honest, Create in me a clean heart, oh God. So what comes out of me is a clean heart so that whatsoever things I think are just. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. So whatever comes out of my heart, whatsoever I think are pure. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. That whatsoever comes out of my heart, uh, whatsoever... I, I, it's lovely. I don't look at it dark and gloomy. I see loveliness. Creating me a clean heart. So God, for whatsoever comes out of my heart is a good report. I don't want to just talk about the negative. I don't want to talk about creating me a clean heart, oh God. So whatsoever comes out uh, uh, is virtuous. Yes, it has something good coming out of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. And Lord, Lord, if there be any praise, uh -huh. I will think on these things. Yes. Job says in the 38th chapter, at 36th verse, who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who hath given understanding? Yes, to the heart. Within the heart. As I close this message, I just want to ask the Lord, create in me a clean heart. Because when I think by myself, I got the wrong thoughts. But when I got Jesus in my mind, as Paul says, let this mind be in 
you as was in Christ Jesus. I have a clean heart. The hearts will think right when you got Jesus in the mind. Let God's word be in your heart. In my heart. When I have the word of God in my heart, it's a cleansing factor. The power of the spirit of the word cleanses. It's a heart fixer. It's a mind regulator. It cleanses the mind. I don't look at things negative that's coming into the world. I see Jesus as being positive in my life. What about you? Satan want you to think negative. But come out of that. We was already born bad. We, we need to re, be reborn by the Spirit of God. And when the Holy Ghost is leading you, you see right. The old folks used to say, when I came up out of the water, my hands looked good. My feet did too. Yeah, you need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you can have it every morning. You can have it every night. You can have it walking down the street. You can have it driving your car. He's with you. Just call on him. He said, I'll be there. He's a heart fixer. When you're going wrong, he'll straighten your heart. When you're thinking wrong, he'll write the thoughts. He'll give you strength to do right. Walk with Jesus. You'll be clean. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Don't take your only spirit from me. I need your spirit to think right. I need your spirit to walk right. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. He won't leave you nor forsake you. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. Just hold on. Let, let him hold you. He'll hold you through the storm. He'll keep you through the rain. I'm talking about when people are talking about you. He'll keep you with clean thoughts. Come and go with me to my father's house. Oh, to my father's house. Oh, to my father's house. Oh, come and go with me to my father's house. There is joy, joy. Sister Jewel, 5 o'clock, Baptist Training Union. Stay in the spirit of the Lord. If you stay with him, he'll stay with you. He says, I stand at the door of your heart. He knocks. Let him in. Where your heart is is where your emotions are. Right, right. Only God can cleanse a heart. All right. Jeremiah says the heart is most deceitful right. above all yes. and weakened. Who can know it yes. but God? Yeah. Because he's the creator. Yes. He created you. He knows. Yes. God didn't make a mistake when he made you a man. Right. He didn't make a mistake when he made you who you are. God don't make mistakes. No, he does. No, he does. Satan will make you think. But let me tell you one thing. Give yourself to God. And you start with your heart. 
Young man, give me thine heart. He loves you. As I always encourage you, don't get lazy. You go everywhere else, shopping and restaurants now. Now, they're taking a, you can walk in restaurants now without masks, get place. Yeah, don't, don't use uh, the church. Stop letting Satan tell you a lie that you'll get COVID when you come to church. Don't say you can have church at home on your couch. No, you don't have no church. You're in your bed. Right, right. Satan will be a deceitful. Yeah. Just got through saying the heart is more. Right. We are born bad. Right, right, right. Satan don't want you to go to church. No, I'm not talking to those who are sick and afflicted. Right, right. Can't make it. Right. But I'm talking about those who go to work every day. Yeah. You know better. Because you weren't raised, as my late pastors would say, you know better because you wasn't raised that way. Come on now. The Lord loves you. Oh, till tonight, six o'clock. Joy.